The most unrealistic part about zombie movies isn't the zombies, or the fact that they have unlimited ammo, it's that they keep on driving their vehicles around years after the apocalypse happens. Gasoline only lasts about 6 to 12 months in a sealed container, so in a real zombie apocalypse all the vehicles become pretty worthless really fast. A proper apocalypse vehicle would be all electric, get its energy from the sun, and be a beast off-road. Which is why today we're going to turn this old school military Humvee into an electric vehicle. Let's get started. So this is going to be a really big project and really expensive. People have been doing EV conversions for quite a while, usually on smaller cars. But this is going to be a lot more expensive because it's a truck and weighs a lot more and needs more power. And it's also going to be more painful on the wallet since all the technology is still pretty new and early adapters, as we know, always have to pay a little bit more. Hummer is coming out with their own electric vehicle this fall called the Hummer EV and costs well over $100,000. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to finish mine before them and have it cost less, but we'll have to see how it goes. I'll be powering my electric Hummer with battery modules taken out of a Tesla Model X and the electric motor I'm using will be taken out of one of those machines that push airplanes around on the tarmac. So it'll be a Frankenstein contraption of parts that hopefully can all come together and work in harmony. So you might be asking, hey Jerry, why did you pick a military Humvee for this project? And you're right, this is probably the last choice of vehicle that you would want to turn electric. But I wanted to see what happens when you take the least fuel efficient vehicle on the planet and turn it into an electric vehicle, going from a gas guzzler to a green machine, because as we know, electric vehicles are the future. The electric motor and the electric battery pack should give it more performance than it ever had with its diesel engine that it has now. And I want to finish my electric Hummer before Hummer finishes theirs, just because that sounds like fun. So this machine is a 1995 military Humvee. And I'm going to be using the words Humvee and Hummer interchangeably. But what they mean is a Humvee is a high mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle. And they were built specifically for the military. Whereas the Hummer was a civilian version that had a lot more creature comforts like AC and an actual interior, which you'll see in a minute. The civilian H1s and the military Humvees look pretty much the same on the outside, except for the military ones have a massive turret hole in the top, or at least mine does. This whole thing is made from aluminum, so it's lighter than it looks, but it still weighs about 5,000 pounds, which is a lot of weight for an electric motor to be pushing. But the motor I'm using is also used to push around jets, so I think we'll be just fine. I think I've talked enough about the outside though, let's take a tour of the inside. These machines are kind of notorious for not being all that great. They kind of fell apart a lot. But I'm hoping that by gutting it and installing an electric system, I can avoid at least some of those mechanical issues. The H1 of the civilian version had air conditioning and a real interior, but this Humvee is bare metal all over. These dials right here will eventually have to come out to make room for a digital display. We're taking the technology from 1995 and taking it to 2021. Most Humvees have a max speed of about 65 miles an hour, but mine is an upgraded version with a top speed of 80. Not that I would ever really want to go that fast. Inside the Humvee we have four seats, as well as plenty of space in the back, kind of like a truck, because you never know what you might need to be hauling in the apocalypse. I'll give you a tour under the hood in just a second, but one of my favorite parts of inside the vehicle is this compartment right here, where you can actually work on the engine from inside the vehicle. Take a look. Full access to the motor and the transmission is right here, and this is what we're going to be attaching our electric motor to. Underneath the hood, which opens up in a kind of unique way, we have the motor, which is coming out, as well as the alternator and the cooling system, which all of this needs to come out to make space for the electric parts. One of the coolest parts of this is that, I mean, there's a lot of cool parts to this. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited. But on the front, there's a bunch of hooks on the bumper, as well as here, by the motor, and on the back bumper. And these are used to carry the Hummer via helicopter and throw it out of airplanes, you know, when they need to put a vehicle somewhere where they can't drive it to. It's pretty impressive how much abuse these things can handle. 
Also, it's important to take a look at the ground clearance underneath. So that Hummer has about 19 inches of ground clearance, while my lifted truck has about 17 inches of ground clearance, but it's not pure ground clearance because we have the differential sticking down back there. And when the differential is sticking down, that takes away from some of the ground clearance that the Hummer doesn't have to deal with. There is no differential sticking down because it has something called portal axles, which I don't know a whole lot about. But instead of having a differential that drops down below the frame, everything is tucked up inside, which gives it a much lower center of gravity and makes it more capable off-road. All of the drivetrain stuff, like the transmission and drive shaft, are raised up between the passengers, which also means it's easier to get in and out of because the driver's not sitting super elevated. The original Humvees are also really good at fording water. This is the air intake right here for the engine. And all of the components inside are sealed, so water can get up to at least that point before the engine floods. Which is more than what you could say for other vehicles. Here's a close-up look at those portal hubs, where the axle comes in up top, but there's still a bunch of gearing inside of the hub itself. And, what's interesting is most vehicles have their brake pads and rotors, these guys right here, down next to the wheel, but that's not the case with this Humvee. Everything is protected in that long metal chamber between the seats. The internet has said that the 0-60 to 60 on this thing is about 20 seconds, which is pretty slow, but it wasn't really built for speed. I personally can't test the top speed of this because the motor is shot right now, as in it's not working, not like physically shot. I did try to fix the motor, but it is definitely beyond repair, and we're gonna swap it out anyway for something that's better. Once it goes in the garage behind me, it is not coming out again until it's thought about what it's done and comes out a completely changed vehicle. This project is gonna be really expensive, but I think it's gonna be educational for all of us, so I think it's worth it. Electric vehicles are still super new. If I attempt this project in 10 or 20 years, it's gonna be a lot cheaper because there's gonna be more used parts to choose from. I'm sure you're curious about how a person would move a 5,000 pound dead military Humvee. And that guy right there is what's gonna do it for us. It's only supposed to hold 3,000 pounds, a 3,000 pound trailer, but uh, it does work pretty well with the Hummer. And there we have it. An electric motor brought it into the garage and an electric motor will be the thing that brings it back out. I'm super excited for this project. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see what happens next. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.